Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, June 5th, 2019 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Travis Ormandy of Google's Zero Day project has reported a vulnerability in Notepad of all applications. Apparently, some memory corruption error that could be used to actually execute arbitrary code. Well, it's of course always curious to see a bug like this in an application like Notepad. It's not yet clear how exploitable this is. No details at this point. Tavis only tweeted that he reported this vulnerability to Microsoft. Of course, it's always curious to have a vulnerability in software like Notepad. It, what we have to see is how exploitable all of this will be. Likely it requires that the victim will open a document in Notepad. But remember how sometimes people like to actually use Notepad to open suspicious documents because Notepad sort of has this reputation of being a simple, safe application to do this. And not to be left alone here to match the notepad vulnerability, we also have details regarding a vulnerability in Vim and NeoVim. Now, this vulnerability has been patched already, was originally reported to the maintainers on May 22nd, and a patched release came out on May 23rd for Vim and 29th for NeoVim. This feature is related to mode lines. Now, mode lines is a tricky feature in Vim. Essentially, what you can do with them is add spe special lines to a text file that alter how Vim works. It's often used, for example, in code files in order to, for example, set certain tab stops and the like, but can also, like in this case, use to execute arbitrary commands. While uh, this particular vulnerability has been patched now, the finder of the vulnerability does recommend that you disable mode lines in Vim, which can easily be done via the Vim configuration file. I think that's certainly good advice if you are not using Vim often. However, if you are a Vim power user, then you probably like these mode lines and will have a hard time disabling them. And then we got another vulnerability in RDP, even though the vulnerability here with the remote desktop protocol is quite different from the infamous blue keep vulnerability that sort of started to make us all patch our systems about two weeks ago. In this case, it's actually about network level authentication. Network level authentication is recommended and actually also a somewhat valid uh, mitigation for the blue keep vulnerability, but apparently it's coming with its own little issues in Windows 10 18.03, that's the April 2000. 18 version as well as the Windows Server 2019 version of RDP. Usually when you're logging into a, a physical system, well, you have like a screensaver that kicks on and locks the terminal after a certain timeout. Similar things work with RDP where the session is locked and then of course you need to re-authenticate to continue the session or not. The problem with these recent versions of Windows is that if there is a network issue and the session has to reconnect, it will also restore in the unlocked state. So the problem here is if the user leaves their RDP session unattended, they're counting on it getting locked as they're walking away from the terminal. The attacker walks by, maybe just disconnects the network cable, plugs it back in, and voila, the session is unlocked. No matter what authentication mechanisms like two-factor or such were configured for the session. Of course, this requires essentially physical access to the remote desktop console. So that's why I don't think it's as a huge deal as Blue Keep, but nevertheless, the exploit is 
trivial. And talking about Blue Keep, uh, today a researcher did introduce a working Metasploit module. However, this module was not made public. The only evidence delivered is a YouTube video that shows that this particular module appears to work. So fundamentally, nothing really has changed as far as Blue Keep is concerned. Uh, most of the working exploits appear to be actually targeting older versions of Windows like Windows XP. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening. And if you don't mind, uh, please uh, leave a good comment at your favorite podcast site. Tell your friends about it. That's it for today and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.